Hi everyone, I'm Kevin Rempel, Paralympian keynote speaker and creator of the Resilience Toolbox. And in this video, I wanna chat with you about how to learn to start asking for help while living with a spinal cord injury. Now, one of the biggest challenges that you will face living with a spinal cord injury, especially when you first get injured, is the feeling of losing your independence. You will feel frustrated that you need to continually ask for help from so many people. You will have, feel, of course, as at, a, at a loss of control. Um, you will feel that you don't want to ask for help. You will feel frustrated. You will feel embarrassed. You will feel ashamed. You will feel possibly a burden. And what you will find is that at some point, you may even hit like a breaking point that you realize that you can't go on without learning how to ask for help. You know, my dad, for example, uh, for those of you who know, my dad had a spinal cord injury and five years after his accident, he took his own life. And one of the biggest challenges that my dad faced in, those fi in that five year period is that he wasn't willing to ask for help. And if he did, he, he let me mind you, my dad did ask for help. He was not always trying to do things on his own. But one of the biggest challenges my dad faced was to admit that he had a problem, um, ask for help more often than he needed to, or than he, than he did, and then to accept that help. So without, like, I almost, I don't want to give it away, but that's what we're going to head to with the three key principles in today's video. So when I reflect back on this experience of my dad and my, and my own spinal cord injury, what I have to share with you today are what I call my famous three A's. My three A's to getting help. And specifically, this actually surfaced from the conversation around mental health. However, after helping facilitate some sessions with other spinal cord injury, injured patients, I realized that this can help here as well. So here's my three A's about how to learn how to ask for help. The first A is to admit that you need help. Okay, the first A is to admit that you need help. Okay, so when you, I don't like K. <laughs> so when you find yourself struggling to ask for help, you will become your biggest barrier to getting the help because it will, you'll say things to yourself like, I think I need help, but I can probably do it on my own. Um, I do need help, but I don't wanna show weakness. Um, I know that they're willing to help me, but I don't wanna become a burden. Like I said, you'll find so many different reasons to get in your own way of actually asking for the help or receiving the help. Like just nobody knows that you need help because you're, you're not even admitting to yourself how much you actually need that help. You know, my dad, like even myself, I'll stop using my dad for a second as an example. It's like, particularly in my business today, it's like, I always know that my, my ego will get in the way saying that I can figure this all out on my own. And then I'll find myself spinning myself in wheels over and over again. When in fact, if I actually just went out and reached for help that I could have probably gotten the answer within just a couple of minutes but our egos will get in, in our own way and prevent us from even reaching out because we wanna solve it all on our own and our pride will take over and, and our ego will take over and those thoughts will just constantly get in our own way. We'll get in our own way. And so the first step in learning how to ask for help is to admit to yourself that you actually do need help and that that's okay. Okay, now the second is to ask. Once you've admitted to yourself that you need help, the second step is to actually ask for that help. So, you know, as an, as an example, like are you referring back to this business example, but it's the same thing. Like you might be, you know, finding yourself, I need someone to help. Um, I can't reach something. Can you please get that for me? Um, <clears throat> You know, I, I have trouble filling out this documentation. Can you please give me some assistance? Uh, you know, I, I'm uncomfortable. Can you 
you know, push me over to a different location? Can you take me aside so I can get some sun? Can you help me get my groceries out of the car? Whatever that is. It's like you may know in your mind that you need help and that's the first obstacle over, to overcome. But the second obstacle and the second step here is to actually ask for that help because nobody knows you're struggling unless you say something. Nobody knows that you actually need the help. Even if you admit it to yourself, you might still find yourself going back to trying to do it all on your own. So you actually need to get out there, vocalize it, send a text, call somebody, holler at them, whatever you need to do to ask them politely, not yelling, for, for some help. So the second step is to actually ask. And the third step is to accept the help. And in brackets, I'm going to put take action. And as an example, you know, <clears throat> when my dad got injured, I talked about how difficult it was for him. And I remember vividly, we had moments where he had appointments set up for a psychologist. And when he was an outpatient, like he would returned home, so life had gone on. But uh, he had these appointments because whether he admitted it or not, we finally got him into the momentum of asking for and receiving some help. <clears throat> However, while he was like awaiting these appointments or on the appointments, he'd either postpone them or he would, you know, end them early or, you know, maybe he wouldn't contribute entirely that he could. And so the, the lesson here, and it, that this can be applied to anything and anyone in life is that you can only help someone who's willing to help themselves. And so if you find yourself with the help in front of you, but you're not willing to try it, you're not willing to implement it, you're not willing to give it a shot, you're not willing to try it one more time, then just if it doesn't work the first time, doesn't mean you have to abandon it. And it doesn't mean that you have to stick with it either. But you need to be your own accountability partner and actually accepting the help. When the help is in front of you, you need to apply it, you need to try it, and you need to continue trying and try something different until you find out what works. I spoke about in uh, another video, may or may not have seen it yet, and I talked a little bit about bowel and bladder issues, and for me, solving that issue had a lot to do with my diet. And it took me years truly to fi figure out my diet to the point that I wasn't heavily reliant on several different um, medications, whether they were prescription or natural supplements. But it required me continually going back to the drawing board, trying things over and over and over again. And so circling back here for a moment, when we think about asking for help, those three key steps, these three key steps are really going to help you process what it's like as we can easily get in our own way. So the first step is to admit, admit to yourself that you need help. The second is to ask for the help that nobody knows you're struggling unless you say so. And the third is to actually accept the help and take action. Admit, ask, and accept. These are three easy key steps to remember, the three A's, admit, ask, and accept, that will help you move forward when you feel like you know that you need help and when you recognize those moments when you're getting in your own way. I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, this can be applied, like I said, to anything, not just late for the spinal cord injury. It can definitely be applied to mental health. It can be applied to your homework. It can be applied to, you know, just building an awesome relationship with whomever you're around and whoever you live with and building a relationship with yourself and knowing that it's okay if you do need to ask for help. Um, please share this video if you found it helpful. Uh, Kevin Rempel signing off. And always remember that there is life after a spinal cord injury.